Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Wednesday, January 6th, starting a new year. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm praying that more people will, will commit to these daily devotions, uh, that we can reach more people uh, with them, uh, just simply by sharing them with our family and friends. Important one here tonight, or this morning. Good morning, Marcy. Uh, important one here this uh, this morning. I'm going to read Matthew 5, 27 through 30. This is Jesus now saying, You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a person lustfully has already committed adultery with him in their heart. Jesus is saying, what is Jesus telling us here? Uh, most of you would never think of committing adultery. Uh, but good morning, Serena, good morning, John. We would never think. Good morning, Alicia. Uh, praying for your uh, for your children. Gosh, um, what is adultery? Adultery is uh, is having sex with someone that is that is married, or you being married and having sex with someone outside of your marriage. That is adultery, and it's one. It was one of the Ten Commandments. Good morning, Roz. It was one of the Ten Commandments: Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yet statistics tell us that as many as 40 to 50 percent of Christians cheat on their spouses, uh, men and women equally. Right, morning, Roz. Morning, Sharon. I think I said Roz twice <laughs> because you're that important, Roz. Uh, so what does God say about all of this? OK, uh, we're going to learn something here this morning. And in 1 Corinthians 6, I'm going to read verses 18 through 20. And before I read it, I want you to know that 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 sexual sins of all kinds was prevalent in, in Corinth. Corinth was like it was called like the the sin city. It was kind of like a hub where people from all directions came there, and they had temples there, uh, pr pr prostitutes, and and it was all kinds of sin there. And so Paul is talking to the Corinthians, and he says. Flee from sexual immorality. Run away from it. All other sins a person commits are outside of their body, but those who sin sexually commit <clears throat> sins against their own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you receive from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. He's, he's, telling, he's telling them and he's telling us, flee from sexual sin. Because sexual sin, your body, your body is, is, has the Holy Spirit of God in it. He says, God owns you. He paid a terrible price for you. And so he says, so your body belongs to, to God. Uh, now listen to this. I'm going to read verses 15 and, and 16. It says this, do you not know that your bodies are temple members of, of Christ himself? So shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Basically, what Paul is saying here, what God is telling us is, when you cheat on your spouse... When, when you have sex with, with someone, you are uniting with that person. And, and it, it's a supernatural thing. You are, you are uniting with that person, and you are bringing the Spirit of God with you. <clears throat> are you hearing this? You're, 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 you're bringing the Spirit of God with you because God lives within you. So when you are uniting outside of marriage with someone, the, the Spirit of God is there. The Spirit of God is there. That's why he says, shall I unite them with something? Never emphasizes, never, never should we do that. Uh, it says this in, in 1 Corinthians 4, 3 through 8. tells us this. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God. 
and that in this matter, no one should wrong their brother or sister or take advantage of them. The Lord will punish people for, for such sins, as we have already told you and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, those who reject this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. Boy, God is pretty, pretty strong on this. Then in Hebrews 13, 4, it says this, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. immoral. Now, here's the thing, though. When we read our verse, today, that's, that's act, the actual act of committing sexual immorality, the actual act of idolatry. But Jesus goes a step further with our verse today. Goes a step further with this. you got to catch this now, okay? Because a lot of us will say, well, we would never do that. But Jesus says, but I tell you, anyone who looks at a person lustfully has already committed adultery with them in their heart. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it, it, it literally means by looking at someone lustfully wanting to have sex with that person. Now, now let, let, me, let me just give you another example here. I want you to imagine that you were getting ready to have sex with someone outside of marriage. But the partner drives into the driveway, and so you stop before it ever happens. Did you have adultery? And your answer would be, no, no, we didn't. We didn't. We were going to, but we didn't do it. But Jesus is saying, yes, you did. Yes, you did. You did it in your heart because you, you were planning on, on having sex. You, 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 you committed adultery in your heart. So if, if you daydream and imagine having sex with someone outside of marriage, if you, if you daydream with imagining that, you, you're doing it in your heart. You're doing it in your heart. Your, your heart is literally telling you that you would if you had the opportunity. So Jesus is telling us that it's not just the act, it's the heart. That's why Jesus said he, we look at the outward, outward, God looks at our heart. Because our heart really is who we are. That's who we really are. It's our heart. And, and God judges us from, from our heart. Uh, and, and we have to realize, we're going to go on here in a couple of days now to divorce. Jesus talks about, and the number one cause of divorce is adultery. When, when, when the spouse cheats on another spouse, that's the number one cause of, 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 for divorce. So God takes it, takes it rather seriously, takes the act of adultery seriously, and takes the heart of the act seriously. So as I started out, most of us would say, well, we would never commit adultery. We wouldn't do that. Maybe some of us have with our heart. So think about this. Think about this and think seriously about this because we, we just heard from the verses here that sexuality is, is, is talked about many times, many times in the scriptures. Uh, and, and, and here's why, okay? Here's why it's, it's, it's such an issue with us. And I've shared this by church many times. Good morning, Michelle. Michelle. Morning, Sandy. Morning, Sherry. Morning, Gloria. Morning, Rose. Uh, there are three strong appetites that God has given us. Three strong ones that that that, that man, woman can't control. We we, we we have a hard, hard time controlling them. But He gave them to us for a reason. First one is 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 hunger. If God didn't give us hunger, we wouldn't eat and we, would, we wouldn't feed our body. So God gave us a strong desire for food called hunger. God gave us a strong desire for thirst. If we, if we didn't have thirst, we would, not, we would forget to drink and our bodies need water. So God gave us a strong desire for thirst. Now, we abuse both of those. We eat the wrong foods. We eat too much food. We drink the, long, the wrong liquids. Some drink too much of it. We can abuse those that God gave us. 
The third one is sex. Strong desire that God gave us because he wanted us to multiply the earth. If he'd have never given us that drive, we would never have multiplied the earth. But again, we it's hard for us to control that. Hard to control hunger, hard to control thirst, hard to control our sexual desires. Especially, especially for for, for young people, for young people when their hormones are, are at, at, their, at their highest. It, it is hard, but it's hard even for, for anyone. It, it's hard. It's hard for marriages to stay, couples to stay loyal to one another. We think of it, 40 to 50 percent of Christians commit adultery. It is hard. It's not easy. That's why God talks about it a lot. That's why he says, flee from it. Run away from it. Get away from it as fast as you can. Don't sit there and start dwelling on it. Don't sit there and start thinking about it. Because when you do that, you're, 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 you're sinning from the heart. I hope this spoke to you. I hope this spoke loud and clear to you. And boy, I'm, you know, I, I keep saying this, and many of, you, uh, many of you do it. I appreciate those of you that do. But we need to get this word out to the world out there. If 40 to 50% of Christians commit adultery, they, they need to hear this. They need to hear how serious God takes this. So if you'd be willing to join me in, in, in getting the word out to as many people as we can, uh, share, these, share this video, would you? Uh, have a great day. Um, tonight will be uh, our, uh, our youth crash uh, message tonight. I'll be singing a Beatles song, Let It Be. <laughs> And then for the rest of you, I hope to join. Hope you join me again tomorrow morning at eight o'clock for our uh, for our daily devotion. God bless you. Have a great day, uh, and please share this so we can get the word out. Have a great day.